Declare, we declare that our lips will glorify you. We will praise you as long as we live. And in your name, we will lift up our, our hands to do your work. Lord, we will be satisfied if you feed us, and we will now sing praises to your name. The church is now called to worship. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever. Happy Sabbath morning and welcome to another service from the Port Antonio Seventh-day Adventist Church. What do you have to offer to your maker this morning? This morning we're gathered here with praise on our lips because despite the many challenges that we are facing, our, per, our, per, our praise and prayers far outweigh these challenges. This morning I want to encourage us to have a more prayerful life and this can be accomplished not only through prayer but through studying his words and the spirit of prophecy. And so for this year the book of focus is last day events and I want to read something from chapter 1 to you. It says the present is a time of overwhelming interest to all living. Rulers and statesmen, men who occupy, occupy positions of trust and authority, thinking men and women of all classes, have their attention fixed upon the events taking, up, taking place about them. They are watching the relations that exist among the nations. They observe with intensity what is taking possession of every earthly element and they recognize that something great and decisive is about to take place. And I am sure that we can all attest that this writing is true. And so with this in mind, as we focus on the theme, I will go, because indeed we have a message to share. How will you go? How will you be sharing that message during the year 2021? Maybe you can give to somebody with the book, Last Day Events. And so we ask that you prayerfully ask the Holy Spirit to lead and to guide each one of you, each one of us, so that we will go and share the message that we have been called to do. And so as you tune into our service today, we ask that you keep a prayer in your heart so that the message that will come forth from the speaker's lips will be one that gives us hope one that encourages us and at the same time it corrects us so at this time i now turn you over to the service that is now in session do have a wonderful sabbath experience their torment ascended up forever and ever and they have no rest day or night who worship the beast and his image and whosoever receive the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandment of God and the faith of Jesus Christ. You may be seated. Happy Sabbath again, everybody. How are we feeling this morning? <laughs> All right, so I'm getting a lot of answers under the mask. I appreciate those. Um, the privilege is mine this morning to welcome all the visitors in the house today. So let, us, let me just see the hands of the visitors. Just raise your hands. Just one visitor we have today. 
All right, praise the Lord. If it's even one person, right? So what I'm going to ask you to do to this. So let me see those hands upstairs. Amen. All right, so one downstairs. Okay, so we have some visitors here today. I guess they're just shy. But if you are standing where, from where I'm standing, you see how beautiful you look with those lovely colors down there. Yellow. The, you ever see a nice garden? And I know that some of you have them at home, you know. All right. What you're going to do for me, because you're going to help me to welcome the visitors. You know the Queen's Wave? Yeah, man, this one. So we're going to turn our attention to some of the visitors. One is behind the Aldridge family there, some upstairs and over here. So we're just going to give the Queen Wave to them. After two, so that was practice. So we know how the Queen Wave going to go. After two, one, two. And say, welcome. welcome. All right, one more time. One, two. Welcome. welcome. All right. My visiting friends and church family, I just want to remind us today with just two Bible texts. In Ephesians 6, verse 10, it says, Finally, finally my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. And if you're looking at these palms, you see how firm they're looking right there? Visiting friends and church family, it is God's strength why we are here today. And in Psalm 46, verse 1, we are reminded that God is our refuge and strength. So, with this, I must tell you all, welcome, welcome, welcome. Amen. We'll continue our service by singing hymn number one. And because we're in the house of God today, we are going to be singing lustily. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. Oh, my soul, praise Him for He is the health and salvation. continue our worship as we return to the Lord our tithes and our offerings. Deacons, please. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruit of all thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. Let us bow our heads as we pray. 
Almighty Father who art in heaven, giver of all the blessings we have received this week, today we come to return to you what truly belongs to you. We thank you, Lord, for health and strength that we could labor this week, and we come today to honor and to glorify your most precious name. We pray that as we return the tithes and the offerings, we pray that you will bless these gifts. Bless each giver, and even those who are not able to give today, we pray that you will bless them likewise. But above all, help us to give ourselves to you also. We pray in Jesus' precious name. A close, selfish spirit seems to prevent men from giving to God his own. The Lord made a special covenant with men that if they would regularly set apart the portion designated for the advancement of Christ's kingdom, the Lord would bless them abundantly so that there would not be room to receive his gifts. But if men withhold that which belongs to God, the Lord plainly declares, ye are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Those who realize their dependence upon God will feel that they must be honest with their fellow men. And above all, they must be honest with God, from whom come all the blessings of life. The evasion of the positive commands of God concerning tithes and offerings is registered in the books of heaven as robbery toward him. No man who is dishonest with God or with his fellow men can surely prosper. We give thee but thine own. Revelation chapter 21. Revelation chapter 21. The verses we will concentrate on are 1 to 8. After the count of 2, we will ask all males to read verse 1. 1, 2. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. 
and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. There shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. Former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Together, but the fearful and unbelieving, and the abominable, and murderers, and warmongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars, shall have their parts in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. May the Lord abundantly bless to our hearts the reading of his word. Congregation remains standing. unto your matchless name. We come, Lord, acknowledging that you are the creator of heaven and this vast universe. We come in obedience to your command. We want to praise you. We want to magnify your name. We want to lift you up on high. Because you are God and God alone. We thank you, Lord, for your presence with us now. We thank you, Lord, for having sent us such a lovely morning, such a lovely day. We thank you, Lord, for your words, the holy scriptures. We thank you, Lord, most of all for your Holy Spirit. We ask now, Lord, that you may just ascend upon us another anointing. Each worshiper in this, your sanctuary, touch each worshiper, Lord, we pray. 
we pray in a special way for our visitors. We pray for our friends who have come in this morning to worship. We pray for the family members of this church. We pray, oh God, that for today, we may be drawn closer to you, knowing that our redemption draws nigh. We pray, oh God, for the children. In a special way, oh God, we ask that you may just surround them, enfold them. We ask that you just build an edge around them. Oh God, so that they too, Lord, may recognize that you are their friend. We ask, oh Lord, that you be with the youth of our church. Strengthen them, Lord. Let them, Lord, be focused. Let them, Lord, be optimistic, knowing that you are the God who is able to do all things. Because with you, all things are possible. Help them, Lord, to dwell in your words and to follow your path. We ask, Lord, that you will be with those who are grieving now. We have lost Sister Fender, Sister Mitchell, and even Brother Gohagan this morning, that we have just mentioned his name. Oh, Lord, we ask that you may be with those grieving families. Oh, Lord, we know that the life belongs to you. And what there is hope. Hope for those who die in the Lord. We ask at this time, Lord, that you be with our sick and shut in members. Oh Lord, sometimes they become weary and discouraged. But we ask, Lord, that they may count the blessings and the days, Lord, when they were able, Lord, to work for you. We ask, Lord, that they us as members may visit and pray with our four as far as it is possible to encourage them along this pathway. We ask now, Lord, that you may be with this community of Port Antonio, that, Lord, that when we, the trumpet is sound here, oh God, those in the proximity, Lord, may be listening in their homes, knowing that there's a hell to shun, there's a God to be glorified and a heaven to gain. Lord, we ask now that you just be with the speaker. Oh, Lord, anoint him with fresh oil from above. May your words, Lord, speak through him. Lord, we need your Holy Spirit in this place. We need your Holy Touch, oh God. We ask now that you may just strengthen us and may we be united and be, Lord, on one accord so that the Holy Spirit will have its way with us and with our lives. At this time, Lord, we ask now that your sweet Holy Spirit may just ascend on each worshiper. We need you, Lord. Where there are sick, we ask at this time, those who are doubting, we ask, Lord, that they may be just being encouraged. We ask, Lord, that you may just take our service today and may it be one that will long be remembered and may someone today fall at your feet, dear Lord, and say, I yield, I yield. And may you, Lord, grant us according to your will that which we have just asked because we say thanks, Lord, Thanks, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for what you're about to do and what you have done. These we ask with thanksgiving again in no other name but in the name of our precious Savior and King. In Jesus' name we ask it. O thou who
God has always provided a man. We are his children and he has the power to appoint and anoint. Today in the speaker's chair is a man who has been brought up in the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And I must confess, I do have a special admiration for my brothers and sisters who were born in the church, brought up in the church, and remain in the church. Today we have our dear elder, Elder Panton. He has been preaching the word for many, many years. As a matter of fact, a lot of us would not know. He was one of the early evangelists when Northeast Jamaica Conference was convened. And even before that, East Jamaica Conference, he has traveled across St. Mary, Portland, and I may dare say, communities of St. Thomas. He has been presenting God's word to his people. Many souls have been brought to the foot of the cross because of his effort. Today, he speaks to us under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I crave from you your divine, your inspired, and your heartfelt obedience to conducting ourselves in a manner that is appreciative of the house of God. I give to you Elder Panton. But just before he speaks, our dear brother Ricardo Shelton will bring us the meditation song. Have you church for the day? All is good? All the time? I 
name of Jesus. Oh, he makes me complete. I need for God the foolish man I used to be. Oh, I'm free from the fears of tomorrow. by Brother Shelton and I almost decided to pack up my notes and preach on free at last. I am free. That's a good thing to be free. Don't allow yourself to be incarcerated. Freedom is priceless I am free even if you are restricted because of physical ailment it's not a good thing at all it's always good to be free and I am happy to declare that Jesus Christ brings freedom I'd like to pay tribute and commendation to those who have nicely decorated inside here. I thought you would say a bigger amen. It looks good. What do you say, church? And then not only inside here is decorated. But when I came last Sabbath, I saw that some amount of decoration was done on the terrace outside there. That's what I'm calling the terrace. And when I came back today, I saw that they have posted, and forgive my ignorance, a mural on the wall there. I think... It looks good. What do you say, church? Yes. These things help to make our worship and our togetherness wonderful. Yes. This is God's church and God's house. And Sabbath mornings after Sabbath morning. Sister Warren comes and appeals to us to assist in the building up of the temple. Let us not take it lightly. Let's not take it lightly. Whatever you can do to assist in the building up of the temple, do it. And I am going to do my part also. Many years ago, we were building a temple at Wayne Road, or to be more precise, we began building a temple at West Retreat. It was no edifice looking like this. We were taking bamboos from Good Hope, George's Hope, and all sorts of hope to build a temple made of bamboo and dirt floor. 
That's what we were building. Of course, zinc was on it, Elder Gooden. Our seats were made of bamboo. And every now and then, a red ants would come out of some of those bamboos. <laughs> Makes life uncomfortable. But the point I am making is that when it comes to the building of God's temple, then he expects every man to play his part. Building the temple of the living God. Very, very important. And I'll tell you why it is important for us to do all we can now to build up God's temple. I tell you why it is so. Because it soon be done. Now I like to use as the theme of my presentation of line from the Negro spiritual. It soon be done. All of these troubles and trials, it will soon be done. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, we are grateful to Thee for health and strength and for life to see today. We pray that Thou will bless us and be with us as we labor in Thy vineyard. In Jesus' name we pray. It will soon be done. All these troubles and trials will soon be done. The problems and perplexities of modern men are manifold. Coronavirus is only one of man's problems. Cancer, diabetes are problems. Are some of the diseases that plague this land and plague humanity. There are many who believe that when December 31, 2020 came and gone and 2021 rose over, things would be different and better. I say not so. Yesterday I was made to understand that there are over 2 million people have died from the coronavirus. Not only that, but every 8 seconds, one person died as a result of this pandemic. I am here to declare this afternoon that it will soon be done. Well, soon be done. Hurricanes, calamities by land and by sea. Problems plague our land. Just a few weeks ago, in the newspaper and on the electronic media, we were made to understand that in our sister parish in St. Mary, a mother and a daughter were locked up. Why? Because it is supposed, it is believed that they were responsible for the death of a member of the family. Mother and daughter responsible for the son's death and the brother's death. I say, church, it will soon be done. Problems in the land. We are living in the midst of an epidemic of crime and violence. I want to declare this afternoon that this present world is doomed. Do you hear what I say? This present world is doomed. The scent of vet 
the stench of death is everywhere and the flames of fire is begin to kingle against it this world is doomed but i say it soon be done soon be done i want you to go with me to my opening text book of daniel everybody knows this passage book of daniel ezekiel and then daniel the chapter is two daniel chapter two hear what the bible says are you there daniel chapter two and i would like to begin at verse 44 what does the bible say what does the bible say you are not there man what does the bible say in the what days of these what kings shall, what should happen the god of heaven shall set up a kingdom what do you say out there i say it soon be done in the days that we are living in in the days of these kings or kingdoms shall the god of heaven set up a kingdom which shall what never be destroyed i say to you today it soon be done oh read the two verses but i like to say to you this afternoon man may postulate man may speculate man may predict man may project but man cannot tell the future with any certainty do you hear what i say but god knows the future god has 2020 vision as far as it relates to tomorrow next year and forever and ever what do you say church god knows the future god predicts the future with certainty i say to you church it soon be done all of these troubles and trials it will soon be done it will soon be done i say god holds the future the bible you have in your head tells about the future it's God's word to mankind. I say to you again and again, it soon be done. If you don't believe me, you will get out in time. If you don't believe me, I ask you to go with me to the book of John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and then John. Soon be done. John says, John chapter 14, 1, 2, and 3. The Bible says in John chapter 14 and verse 1, Let what? Not your heart be what? Troubled. If I was to read that text in light of what I am saying, I would say, Let not your heart be troubled. It will soon be done. What do you say out there? Let not your heart be troubled. It will soon be done. The verse says, He believe in what? God believe also in me. In my Father's house are what? Many mansions. If it were not so, I would have what? Told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will what? Come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there he will be also. I say when Jesus comes, the trials will be over. What do you say, church? Soon be done. Well, soon be done. One, two emphasize this afternoon 
that the coming of Jesus Christ, the thought about the second coming of Jesus Christ, must fire our hope and color our dreams. You know, can you imagine somebody who is on the hospital bed today, is sick, can hardly move. You know, I listened to the announcement by given today, and almost approximately about 10 members of the church or what, on the sick list. About 10 people I heard on the sick list, and two on the death list. I say, church, it will soon be done. Do you hear what I say? Sickness will be over one day. Do you hear what I say? You walk the streets of Portland, told you, and you see people who are insane out of their minds. People can hardly make hands move. And the entire place and then people just moving back and forth. Paying no regard to what is happening. And those who are around us, I say it will soon be done. Sickness will be gone when Jesus comes. There will be no more mourning. No, there are a lot of mourning all around. I read the text over and over. I like to declare this afternoon that Jesus is not coming back to build a big housing scheme. Text says in my father's house are what? Many mansions. But Jesus is not coming back to build a big housing scheme so that all of us can have a house. Know that housing is one of the problems that plague the society and worldwide. But Jesus says he's going to come back and put an end to that problem, the housing problem. In my father's house are what? Many mansions. And I tell you this afternoon, church, you don't have to pay any mortgage for what Jesus has gone to prepare. What is say out there? The mansions are bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Soon be done. He's going to get a mansion mortgage free. Going to get a mansion and you have to pay nothing down because Jesus has paid it all. What do you say out there, church? I say it soon be done. All these troubles and trials, when I get over on the other side, I'm going to what? Sit down and I'm going to ask Elder Brown to come. And give us a line or two of that song. It soon be done. That's a powerful Negro spiritual. Soon be done. Like it to sing along. Will soon be done. Yes. All troubles and trials when I get home on the other side. I'm gonna shake my hands with the elders, tell all the people good morning. Sit down beside my Jesus. I'm gonna sit down and rest a little while once more. It soon be done, all troubles and trials, when I get home on the other side. I'm gonna shake my hands with the elders, I'm gonna tell Hello, all the people good morning. I'm gonna sit down beside my Jesus. 
I'm gonna sit down and rest a little while. What a day that is going to be when we are going to sit down beside our Jesus. What do you say out there? Tremendous day. Say, it will soon be done. I'm hastening on towards my close. There are many problems. Problems at school. Problems at the workplace. Problems in the homes. Problems in the institutions all around us. And more, most alarming problems in the church. And I say that softly. Problems all around. And you come to church and you thought this is the one place that would be problem free. But there are turmoils and problems in the church. But I am not terrified about that. Neither am I perplexed. Jesus had 12 men. One was a Peter. One was a Thomas. One was a Judas. You had a James and John, ambitious men, in the church. But I want you to understand that when these men became consecrated, touched by Jesus Christ, they became different men and women. What do you say out there? So there are problems in the church, but do not become disheartened nor dismayed. It is God's church. Do you hear what I say? I like to declare that Panton is not going to try to fix it. <laughs> I thought you would say amen. You don't say amen. I say there are problems in the church. And Panton is not going to try to fix it. It is God's church. God will fix the problems. What do you say out there? It soon be done. All these Troubles and trials will soon be over. God can take care of the problems in his church. I'm going to hasten on to the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 21. That's what we had for our scripture reading. Revelation 21. Hear what the Bible says. We want to pick up the argument in verse 1. The Bible says, And I saw a what? Oh, I don't like how you read that. Look at it and look at it. The Bible says, And I saw a new heaven and a what? New earth. What do you say of that? And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, not at all. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. The fact that we are going to have a new earth, the problems that plague us on this earth will not be in the new earth. What do you say, Arthur? I say. It soon be done. I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were what? Pass away. There were what? No more sea. But I want to shift over to verse 3. The Bible says, and I heard a what? Great voice from heaven saying what? 
Behold, the what? Tabernacle of God is what? With men. And what shall happen? And he shall what? Dwell with them. What do you say, church? God is going to be our God. We are going to be his people. I say it will soon be done. All these troubles and trials. New heaven and new earth. Now drop down to verse 4. It says, and God shall what? Wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more what? What else? No more sorrows. No more pain. No more everything that plague us here and now will be over forever and ever. What do you say, church? Soon be done. All these troubles and trials. You know, we did read down to verse 8, but I don't even want to read down there. I mean, look at what is happening there, but, but let me read it nonetheless. Verse 8, it says, but the what? Fearful and worse, and unbelieving, and the unpardonable and worse, the murderers, and the warmongers, and the sorcerers, and who else? <laughs> and, and, and if I was to do an analysis of this, then I would say, Elder Kirkland, that <laughs> number of people can't make it. But you look at the text carefully. It also lists liars among murderers. Huh. You see that? And you have a lot of people just lie, just lie for nothing. Man, I tell you, they just tell lies, sir. The Bible says that they are numbered among the sorcerers, the warmongers, the murderers. So lying is a big thing. You know, the Bible says, speaking of some people, I don't want to quote it in the original way. It says, he are a liar. <laughs> and the, what, the devil is a liar. But that's not what the Bible says. Ye are of your father. That's the correct rendition. Ye are of the, your what? Father. The devil. For he's a what? Liar. And a liar from the beginning. When you tell lie, Satan is your father. You are Satan picnic. And it's a big thing. But liars won't make it to God's eternal kingdom. I say it will soon be done. Lying and liars will be over. It will soon be done. I'm going to hasten on to my clues. And I've said that quite a number of times. But I'm now packing it up. So you know I'm going to be sitting down. But before I sit down, I'm going to go back to the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 14. And that's where I want to sit down on. That's what I want to sit down on. Revelation chapter 14. 6 to 12. And I what? Another angel, what? Flying the midst of heaven. Having the what? The everlasting gospel to preach. What do you say, church? So this church is no pian pian church, you know. We are represented by the angel flying in the midst of heaven. And we have the what? Everlasting gospel or the message 
to preach unto them that dwell on the earth. What does the angel say? With a loud voice, and what does it say? Fear God and what? Give glory to him for the what? The hour of his judgment is come. It soon be done. So we got to tell people. We got to call people to fear God and give glory to him. What is Sayatha? Purpose of the church is raise up to tell men and women that it is soon be done. Brother, personal ministry leader, it soon be done. So we got to tell people to what? Fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is upon us. We are experiencing judgment right now. What do you say out there? Leave this judgment will soon be over. It will soon be done. It will soon be done. And drop down to verse 6. Verse 7, sorry. Saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come. And what else? And worship. And worship him that what? And make heaven and earth. And you know, people are called to worship. And these days, people are worshiping all kind of things. And evil worship, evil self worship. Never come and everywhere I go, I see a youngster taking a photograph of himself. And they call it, what they call it? Selfie. And they post it all over. They must look good. Then worshiping themselves. Worship house, worship material things. But the Bible says we must what? Worship him that what? Makes heaven on earth. What do you say out there? Now I bridge my argument. I'm not saying that young people must look good. What do you say, church? Because I firmly believe that God's people must look good. What do you say out there? God's people must feel good also. But God's people must only worship the Almighty. What do you say, church? Worship him that make heaven and earth. Then I is known. Verse 8 says, There followed... Another angel saying what? Babylon is falling, is falling. Right, everything is crumbling all around us. Babylon, false system, and everything is going to come to pieces. Going to come to naught. It will soon be done. All these troubles and trials. Finally, brethren, we are Adventists because we are looking for the second return of Jesus Christ. What do you say out there? I say we are looking for the second return of Jesus Christ. I'm not saying that we must gaze into the eastern skies. But our way of living, our modus operandi must testify that we are looking for the second coming of Jesus Christ. What do you say out there? Because it soon be done. Soon be done. We are Sunday Adventists because we keep holy the seventh day of the week according to the divine dictates of Almighty God. I sincerely hope and trust that when the roll is called up yonder, people are going to tell all the people good morning. 
And they are going to sit down beside our Jesus. I sincerely hope that all of us who are here this morning will be there to sit down beside our Jesus. want to praise God for the decision of Alison Mothersey. She had decided to walk with her Lord in baptism. And heaven is now rejoicing. I am told that it's two candidates. The Spirit of God is really at work. And as Elder just preached a while ago, it soon be done. It soon be done. It soon be done. It soon be done. Amen. for deacons to stand beside the male who are here. Alison, you are not alone. She was saying, it's me one. You are not alone. Praise God. Stand beside the men. Deacons. One more deacon. Thank you. We ask you, candidates for baptism, that at the end of each vow, if it is your desire to respond by raising your right hand, 
Number one. Do you believe that there is one God? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, a unity of three co-eternal persons. Number two, you take your hand down and you raise it again at the end of each one. Do you accept the death of Jesus Christ on Calvary as the atoning sacrifice for your sins and believe that by God's grace through faith in his shed blood, you are saved from sin and its penalty? Three, do you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, believing that God in Christ has forgiven your sins and given you a new heart? And do you renounce the sinful ways of the world? Four, do you accept by faith the righteousness of Christ, your intercessor, in the heavenly sanctuary and accept his promise of transforming grace and power to live a loving, Christ-centered life in your home and before the world? Five, do you believe that the Bible is God's inspired word, the only rule of faith and practice for the Christian? Do you covenant to spend time regularly in prayer and Bible study? Six, do you accept the Ten Commandments as a transcript of the character of God and a revelation of His will? Is it your purpose by the power of the indwelling Christ to keep this law, including the fourth commandment, which requires the observance of the seventh day of the week as the Sabbath of the Lord and the memorial of creation? Seven, do you look forward to the soon coming of Jesus and the blessed hope when this mortal shall put on immortality? As you prepare to meet the Lord, will you witness to his loving salvation by using your talents in personal soul winning endeavor to help others to be ready for his glorious appearing? Eight, do you accept the biblical teaching of spiritual gifts and believe that the gift of prophecy is one of the identifying marks of the remnant church? Nine, do you believe in church organization? Is it your purpose to worship God and to support the church through your tithes and offerings and by your personal effort and influence? Ten, do you believe that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? And will you honor God by caring for it, avoiding the use of that which is harmful, and abstaining from all unclean foods, from the use, manufacture, or sale of alcoholic beverages, from the use, manufacture, or sale of tobacco in any of its forms, for human consumption and from the misuse of or trafficking in narcotics or other drugs? 11. Do you know and understand the fundamental Bible principles as taught by the Seventh-day Adventist Church? Do you purpose by the grace of God to fulfill His will by ordering your life in harmony with these principles? 12. Do you accept the New Testament teaching of baptism by immersion 
and desire to be so baptized as a public expression of faith in Christ and his forgiveness of your sins? 13 and last. Do you accept and believe that the Seventh-day Adventist Church is the remnant church of Bible prophecy and that people of every nation, race, and language are invited and accepted into his fellowship? Do you desire to be a member of this local congregation of the world church? They have indicated by responding to all 30 in the affirmative. And I'll ask a baptized member of this church to so move that these be accepted as members of the church subject to their baptism. It has been moved. Seconded? It has been seconded. All those who are in favor, could you raise your right hand? Candidates, please look around to see all who are supporting you in your decision for Christ today. Thank you very much. If there's anybody who oppose, will you indicate by the same sign? No opposition. Shall we pray? Loving Lord, we thank you for the work of the Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord, that it will soon be done. And while we wait your coming, there's a work to be done. And it is being done. We pray today for a special anointing on these candidates who have decided to follow you all the way. We recognize that in their walk is not going to be easy. But if you hold your hand, Lord, they will make it. So we place them in your capable hand and ask you to help them to keep their eyes on you who is that light so that if they keep their eyes on the light they will make it into your kingdom be with us as a church family may we support them may we encourage them and may we do all that we can so that together we'll make it into that kingdom which is soon to come bless us as we journey now to the river for this baptismal service, we pray in your name. Amen. We'll now have the closing exercises. At the end of the service, deacons.